And welcome to Code Quickie. And today we are going to be looking at Cloud Composer. All right, so Cloud Composer is a very useful tool in the Google Cloud platform, a wide variety of APIs. And this is why, for a quick overview, say we're using a lot of data APIs, big data APIs. You're using your BigQuery to parse through gigabytes of data. You're using part sub when you're talking about flow of data, data flow from the IoT setup or IoT application, or using AutoML vision when you want to deal with machine learning and images and videos and recognizing objects, recognizing cats, the difference between a cat and a dog, a car or a horse, all right? And say you're not working on these one by one, say you're working on these all together, right? In one big project, in one big organization at your job, right? You're gonna need orchestration, right? Which means organization and scheduling. And you can get that done with Google Cloud Platform Composer, right? So let's just take a dive in, dive what's going on. Let's go ahead and create a new instance, right? So on this page, on this page, we're going to take the properties in the name column as these properties, and we're going to fill them out in the composer on the create environment page with the values that are given here. And once we go ahead and do that, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while for um, your composer environment to get set up. However, we're going to just talk about the basics while it's getting set up, right? So fill out the values from the table, go ahead and create, and once you're done, right, just let it create and listen to what I say about the concepts, all right? So core concepts, right? So there's three things we're using Cloud Composer. So there's actually four, which is scopes and permissions. Always want to make sure you have the right permissions or you can't get anything done. Always run into issues, right? But three things I want to talk about are the DAGs. I want to talk about the environment configuration and I want to talk about the Airflow user interface. So the first things first is the DAGs. This is like the basis of how to get things done in Composer and DAGs. What they are is directed acyclic graphs and they're Python scripts, right? What's really important is that just allows you to configure and set your compose your schedule, your organization. Wait, you say you have like one project, right? With different um with different tasks that you have to run. We're gonna look here, right? Data product cluster, right? You use these DAGs in order, so it's not like one you can't it's only you're only allowed one big organization on um, scheduling organizer for the whole api you can have several of these going on right and here in this data what we have is we're going to create a cloud data prop cluster right we talk about a pot hadoop and spark just creating one alone right that is a task then we're going to go ahead and run our hadoop um hadoop or spark jobs on this cluster on this data product cluster and then once we're done we go ahead and delete data product cluster right so when you're doing work on the cloud right you could be doing this yourself right cloud composer gives you a way to go ahead and automate it automate your workflow your daily work schedule with DAGs, right so the next thing you want to do is that after we get this set up we want to go into the environment configuration all right and this is a lot of important stuff like the service account that you're doing with this is amazing when google does this it tells you the service account that's responsible for dealing with this api very very helpful so you don't have to go ahead and find it because finding a service account responsible for your api might be a bit tough right you have to go and look around in your im page and they all look the same they all look the same so <laughs> um definitely want to refer to it you don't even know it's, if it's there sometimes right and um also an, another important thing to know is the dax folder right where all of our dax are going to go they usually go in storage buckets right um a storage bucket will be generated when you're making a composer instance as well as the airflow web ui right so this is ui i'm not sure what framework is built off pretty sure it's angular right google using Google Cloud Platform, Angular's Google products, so, and also my Angular fan. And this Airflow UI is basically how you can interact with your 
with your DAGs, with your scheduled organizations, right? So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna just show how we can go ahead and use this DAG and just get, get this set up on Cloud Composer. So first things first, I wanna just go ahead and clone this repo, which is already available, right? Then you wanna CD into this part of the repo. Oh, wow. Well, already CD'd into that correct part. And what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and copy. Oops. Just go through the commands, you already did it. Right? We go ahead and copy our DAG, which is Python scripts, right? Into the storage bucket for the composer instance in the DAX filter. Right? And as you can see, right, we go ahead, we have our DAX folder, and we just copied and paste, and we're just sending this DAG into the DAX folder. Now, as soon as it arrives, right, it's going to execute, right? It's on a schedule. What makes it, allows it to execute this, this logic. When we specifically, on um, this variable yesterday, it's not an enum, okay? We actually have to use this, use this code right here, right? In order to allow this to execute right away. So this is really important if you want your DAGs, just start executing right away, okay? Um, we use this, right? You use this little script here in order to get this to work, all right? And once we have it, once we have our DAG all loaded to cloud storage, Composer sees this in real time, and your job is going to show up in the UI dashboard. Right, so unfortunately, it doesn't show up right away. You know, Google does a lot of things real time, but when it comes to UI interactions, um, they completely miss out on the fact that it needs to be done real time too, which is okay, which is okay. Um, if there's a refresh button, that'll be fine. But since there's not, just know that you need to not really refresh the page. But you have to click on a, a DAG that's already running and click back out in order to see it. Right, so we're just gonna take a walk into this DAG, look at the graph view, um, tells us better what's going on, right? And here, what we have is that it failed. So like if it succeeded, Right, we would see it um cloud data prop, we would see a data prop running, right? In our jobs, we would see we would see the respective jobs running and in our storage bucket that we provided, we would see we would see um a file here for the completed Hadoop file. Right, as you can see here, output file for cloud data prop job. It's looking for a GCS bucket. Okay, so we would see on um, the output file here. However, it failed, right? And we can do is just go ahead. Click on the node. Look at the task instance details. And um, look at the logs. This is how we get access to the logs just to see if something went wrong. Go to the look. I want to see where the exact error, error came from. It was probably because of a quota issue, right? Right, quotas, a lot of quotas, a lot of quotas that you're dealing with, right? Just want to make sure that these issues are dealt with. That's okay. You just look on, um, just look at your. APIs, you just look at your data, you wanna look at your configuration, just wanna make sure that you're using um, the needed, the correct amounts. All right, the correct, um, the correct amounts when it comes to the amounts of CPUs, the amount of storage that you need, right? And the amount of memory, right? You wanna make sure that all those metrics are sufficient. All right, so that is a tutorial for using Cloud um, Composer. Yeah, please like, share, and subscribe, and a link of the instructions will be pasted in the description. Thank you.